As I said, I don't expect you, nor do I think that you should be unskeptical about everything I said. I think you should be skeptical about it. We have very little chance of extrapolating that far correctly. This is what current theory is pushing us toward. Will surprises come in between now and the time of recurrences or whatever time it will take for people to get these things straight? I rather suspect surprises will happen. But nevertheless, let me just leave you with a statement that I deeply believe. I said it before, the arrow of time is a fact of nature and needs an explanation. We observe time has an arrow simply because we are in the vicinity of a singularity, the Big Bang. The presence of the arrow of time and its idea have long baffled scientists and philosophers. One of the most aggravating aspects of this is that time is reversible according to our laws of physics. Nothing in the equations themselves says that time can only move in one direction. The idea that time is an illusion offers one answer to this problem, that it can go seamlessly back and forth between the past and the future. Time is merely an illusion created by awareness. Putting a date on each feeling allows our brains to organize the chaotic tangle of sensory inputs that are continuously bombarding us and keeps us alive and functional. There is no need for the universe to organize itself in this way, so I ask if time just exists for our convenience and if the time is an emergent concept. On the other hand, the entire universe appears to have a tangible past that existed long before intelligent life appeared on Earth and we developed awareness and began observing it. Another conclusion is that time does really exist and that we are compelled to go forward. And yet, the theory of general relativity tell us that time is the fourth dimension in which we live. There may be a relationship between the fact that time always advances and why entropy always rises. After all, it is the only significant location in physics where a physical arrow of time can be observed. Although there is a connection, physicists have not been able to elucidate how it operates or glean any additional information. If statistical thermodynamic processes actually affect how time moves, and if that affect our view of time as a whole, we really don't know. Unfortunately, we only have a macroscopic understanding of the world in which we exist. When trillions of atoms and molecules are randomly scattered in space and are exchanging energy, they act in accordance with quantum mechanics, which nobody truly understands. As a result, the course of events is set in stone. The overall disorder and entropy both rise with each transition. Greater disorder in the universe as a whole is paid for, that we as intelligent creatures can generate locally and payment typically occurs through the discharge of heat into space. Time is irreversible due to this statistical law which states that transformations involving macroscale objects inevitably result in an increase in entropy. Entropy is the quantity of thermal energy per unit temperature in a system that cannot be used to perform productive tasks. It is a measure of molecular disorder or unpredictability in a system as work is derived from organized molecule motion. The idea of entropy provides significant insight into the direction of spontaneous change for many daily events. The second law of thermodynamics, which asserts that an isolated system allowed to spontaneous evolution cannot see a decrease in entropy over time, is centered on entropy. Isolated systems therefore progress toward thermodynamic equilibrium, which has the highest entropy, and from this arising the ramification of the second law of thermodynamics is the irreversibility of some processes. According to the second law of thermodynamics, a system's total entropy cannot generally decrease unless the entropy of another system increases. As a result, the entropy of a system that is isolated from its surroundings tends not to diminish. Labor must be applied to the colder body in order for heat to move from it to the hotter body, and no cycle operating device can generate network from a single temperature reservoir. Even if no physical law would be broken, if this occurred it does not happen in nature for a broken glass to be put back together into an unbroken glass, because time needed for somebody to wait long enough to witness this event far exceeds the current age of the universe. 
Time travel is impossible for the same statistical reason. Rewinding time would imply returning the cosmos, or a portion of it, to a macroscopic state with less entropy. Imagine, for instance, being able to go back in time to the moment the coffee mug was still on the table just before falling. You must reduce the universe's overall entropy to achieve this. The rule of big numbers that governs the universe appears to make it impossible for us to go back and change the tape of the events in any way. We cannot reverse the arrow of time because we cannot reduce the entire amount of entropy. This is a good argument for why a time travel machine as we see in the Hollywood movies will never exist. Notions like arrow of time, entropy, and black holes are connected. For decades it was believed that black holes are simply erasing chunks of our universe out of existence so that the laws of conservation are violated. How can a time traveler visit a past in which the planet he wants to visit has been consumed by a black hole? There is no recovery from that. The observation that the entropy of a black hole seems to be proportional to its area when it was anticipated to be proportional to its volume is a point of frequent confusion that we can confirm today, and until recently it was disputed by numerous authors. This perplexity stems, either implicitly or overtly, from the notion that a black hole functions as a three-dimensional system and that its Boltzmann-Gibbs thermodynamic entropy represents that system. Hawking radiation is used to answer the conundrum for the semi-classical theory of gravity, where the fields are represented by quantum field theory and gravity by relativistic relativity theory. According to quantum field theory, virtual particles that arise and disappear permanently fill the physical vacuum. Particle-antiparticle pairs can form directly from vacuum in close proximity to the black hole's event horizon, but they are still outside of it the particle's total energy to appear positive while the antiparticle total energy appears negative, the particle can escape to infinity while the antiparticle can only lose weight and energy as it descends into the black hole. The information that has fallen inside the black hole vanishes when the black hole evaporates since such radiation is incoherent. Such a result seems to go against the unitarity and reversibility of quantum mechanics which state that information cannot be lost. I would say that we observe time has an arrow simply because we are in the vicinity of a singularity, the Big Bang. From human perspective, 14 billion years since Big Bang is a very, very long time. But if there exists someone or something, one being or a device that can witness the universe in astronomical times, then the 14 billion years that have passed so far are nothing less than a blink of an eye in the broader scheme of things. The far future of the universe, it seems to resemble something called de Sitter space. This is a kind of space without matter and radiation, a period characterized by such long time scales that if protons do not decay, and if anyone or anything still alive then, and looking back to present time, it will look for them, that out time is still part of the Big Bang itself. In fact, the whole stellar era, which will still take another 100 trillion years from now, will be considered just a blink of an eye, part of the Big Bang itself as well. In the Sitter universe, time will lose all meaning. This is far beyond stellar era, far beyond black hole era, and even beyond the iron stars era. It is beyond eternity itself for all the practical purposes, when entropy would have already closed the chapter on things. Maybe only then, at the end of things, the arrow of time will cease to exist, but in that void and infinite-like universe, there is a non-zero chance that simply out of the vacuum of space, a fluctuation arise, a bubble nucleation, a new universe is born, and the arrow of time will have a direction once again. Each link of this lattice should be thought of as having some color. A color means one of the minima of the landscape. So each link contains an index n, and if all the ends were the same, this would be the special case of one de Sitter space, so one minimum. That would be the special case of all the ends being the same. Now, of course, what we're going to be interested in is the population statistics of ends and ends, so it wouldn't be too interesting from that point of view if there was only one minimum. n labels a particular minimum a particular point on the landscape, if you like. Let's talk about the notion of a bubble nucleation. 
I could have drawn a picture of bubble nucleation in the center space, and you know what it looks like, I won't bother drawing it. If you take any point on the tree, and it's labeled with an index M, a color M, and you trace backward, you will eventually come to a point where it's no longer M, where it will be N, if you go back even further. That point is a bubble nucleation. It's the bubble nucleation of a bubble of type N, M, M, in a background of N, okay? And there's a rate for it. The rate for the transition from N to M is analogous to the coleman delucha bubble nucleation process. And we'll call it gamma N M, and not the way it reads. You go from N to M. N to M, N initial, M final. And we assume it's much less than one. I will assume it's much less than one, although I'm not even sure how often I've used that, but I'm going to assume it's much less than one. If it's anyways up near one, you have a pretty good probability of the whole thing going uh, plopped into, uh... okay. Detailed balance. Detailed balance is gonna drive almost everything I say from here on. So what is detailed balance? I will motivate it by simply saying it's a property of coleman delucha instanton calculus. It says that the rate for going from N to M and the rate for going to M to N, and you can go from N to M and you can go from N to N. Transitions and down transitions are thermodynamically allowed, but they are related by a factor of exponential of entropy. The meaning of this is that gamma MN is a symmetric matrix, a symmetric matrix equal, we're going from M to N and N to M, times a density of states factor E to the entropy of the vacuum M. All right, the usual uh, Hartle Hawking or, the, or, or Gibbons Hawking uh, entropy of uh, of the local de Sitter space. That's detailed balance with M being symmetric. 